Welcome to People. I'm Shirley Lin. Today, I'm really honored to have as my guest Mr. Stanley Yen, who is chairman of the Landis Hotel Taipei, or rather, Landis Taipei Hotel, and he's also chairman of the Alliance, which helps children of indigenous tribes,、uh, mostly on the east coast of Taiwan. Well, let's welcome Mr. Yen. Mr. Hi, Yen, thank you so much for coming. Hi, Shirley. How are you? I'm well, fine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, you know, we I think a lot of people really want to know、um, more about you as a person, about your life.、Um, we know so much about what you've done for Taiwan, for the tourism here, the tourism bureau, and everything. But、um, can we start with, you know, what was your childhood like? We're、oh. so curious to know. I know that you were only one year old、mm. when you moved to from Shanghai to、mm. Taiwan. Yeah. But what was your childhood like? Well, actually,、um, my father actually have five children.、Ah. Okay. And、uh, we came to Taiwan with four of us. Okay.、Uh, one brother did not make it. Oh. But、uh, together, my father also brought along two friends' son. Come、oh. over at that time. Some of the family where they have still a lot of big assets, they do not. They was re- they were reluctant to remove、uh, from China, so、right. they have their kids come along with us. So we came with、uh, six kids. Wow!、Uh, together with my mother. Yes.、Uh, when we first landed here, my my we used to own a hotel in Shanghai actually. Oh,、yeah. I see. But we lost everything.、Uh-huh. So my father actually have to start from. From scratch,、mm-hmm. uh, but he's not really a business person. Yeah, he, he he living in uh, our or, my original family is from Hangzhou. Okay, he coming from a、uh, he came from a very wealthy family, so he doesn't really have to work in his life until the war,、oh. and after war, of course, we get to tai- Taiwan. We first landed in Tainan, okay,、uh, because. Of You know, Hangzhou used to have the Air Force base there called、mm. Jianqiao Jitang. Yes. So my father、uh, have a lot of friends.、Uh, he was invited to say, "Come to Tainan. The weather is good, and you can <laughs>、uh, we can easily get you a house." You know. Yes. So my father kind of、uh, decide to settle down in Tainan,、mm-hmm. and he was elect- elected in that little district as a Li Zhang. Okay,、oh, Li Zhang.、Okay. Uh, it's not、um. even a mayor. It's a, it's another. Right, smaller even, district.、Right. Okay, but anyway,、uh, that's how he start his career in Taiwan. Okay, but、uh, for myself,、um, uh, my father actually, I was born when my father was already forty six. I was、mm-hmm. an, the last child in the family, so、uh, he really doesn't believe、uh, he needs to put too much effort on me. <laughs> he himself have changed his lifestyle after、mm-hmm. facing all the change in his own life. So he actually turned himself become a Buddhist. Okay, he、uh, Buddhism.、Mm-hmm. Uh, he、uh, he spent a lot of time uh, to uh, uh, to do meditations to practice his. Uh, uh, he he run this district. Also help some of the people who escape from China.、Mm. At that time, a lot of people, in order to come to Taiwan, they have to join the military, or they are forced、mm-hmm. right. uh, by the military to take the young people to join the military. So when they landed here, obviously a lot of them they are not、uh, used to the military life. So a lot of them escaped.、Oh, okay. They come to、uh, my father for help.、Oh. So actually, my father, because was he, at that time he was the one doing the, the registration for anybody who immigrant who comes to Taiwan, they need a new ID.、Mm-hmm. So he was kind of person would help people. You know, to find a new、like、life. You, yeah, yeah, it looks like you really take after your father, a very kind-hearted person, a, a true philanthropist. That's well, what I that's, see. That's why I think.、Uh, that's what I have learned from my father. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a very poor condition yourself, you still give rooms to others. That is so great. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what、uh, what my childhood probably、mm-hmm. the most important influence to me. All right. Well,、yeah. we're going to jump right ahead, like、okay. way ahead.、Sure. I know you served in military. You know you did your job as you're supposed to, 
And then you got a job. Well, actually, you didn't know where you're going to find a job, and you got a job as a messenger at sure. American Express. But then, only in five years, you became general manager of American Express. I think all of us are very curious to know how you did it. Well, in Chinese, there is a saying called "十四造英雄 I okay. was uh, in that particular circumstance. I was given the opportunity. Uh, American Express. Was just about open that time. Okay. So I was recruited in a in a, in a, in a, in the situation where the company was started from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, in the in the recruitment requirement, basically uh, on the newspaper they say, "Well, we require everybody have college university degree oh, because you yeah. must be able to speak English." Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very hard for me because mm -hmm. I I certainly disqualify for that without being uh, to university right. myself right. and just uh -huh. finished the military service, so I was uh, I was really disappointing. I was looking forward to, uh, because one of my classmates uh, who graduated from university and I got a job, you know. You mean at American, American Express, Express as well? Yeah. Okay. So he was my neighbor. That was the reason how I know there is opportunity there. Uh, until one day, um, actually, my friend realized I had tried to look for a job for six months without being able to 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 get er anywhere. Yes. Finally, my friend uh, said, "Well, we we seems have one possibility uh, uh, to hire someone do not need do not require university degree." Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, what was the job?" He said, "Well, messenger." Okay. Mm -hmm. For me, my English level. I can't even understand what is the meaning of messenger. I heard about <laughs> managers, but never know what is okay. man messengers. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, I said whatever job, you know, uh, I'll, I'll take, take it. it. <laughs> you know, because I, without being, you know, yeah. you got so frustrated for six months without being able to find anything. Yes. So that was my very first opportunity. I mm -hmm. went into American Express as a messenger uh, in 1971. Okay, and uh, that was a time where Taiwan actually got thrown out from United Nations. Right. right. Mm -hmm. It was a very difficult time for Taiwan, mm -hmm. and I wasn't being able to speak English, to be honest. Mm -hmm. you know, I uh, I joined the company. I was like everybody else. I saw Taiwan become open to the world. You know, we won't be able to have mm -hmm. any connection with the world anymore. We lost our platform in the yes. political platform in the United Nations. But when I joined, soon after I joined American Express, I find that was totally wrong. Okay, because American okay. Express I have a lot of credit card holders, traveler check uh, holders. I have, of course, the travelers who comes there. They pick up mails at that time, you know, yes. customer mails at that time. So I was very amazed. One of my job being a messenger is I have to go to the mailbox like three times a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, not for the company, it's mostly for the travelers yes, who, who right. is looking for their mails. Okay? Yeah. Because American Express have 800 offices around the world. And uh, certainly American Express become the mailing address for many uh, customers of American Express. That's very nice of American Express to offer that kind that of time. service. Yeah, At really. that time, it was very hard. I you know. know to, I mean, these people are homesick, you know, so they want Definitely, to get their yeah. letters from their family. So, uh, so suddenly I see a purpose. I saw every time when I go to, I went to Paris of press office, come back. I always see someone is waiting for me. Oh, so, and I, I find wow, your, what your job is so job. important. <laughs> yeah, you suddenly realize saying we are not really totally cut off the relation with foreign uh, visitors. Actually, I soon. Uh, it didn't take me too long time to understand. Actually, tourism is a very important vehicle. To making friend for Taiwan with the world, right? And that was the, that was one of the very first uh, inspirations for me uh -huh. about what is the true meaning of tourism. Right. Okay, I I should I surely since then have committed a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, trying to be uh, 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 try to be a host okay. for Taiwan, try to be a host for Taiwan. Nobody to be had a host to ask for you my to company. do that. You did it yourself. So I, I, I immediately self-motivate myself to see the purpose of doing that. Yeah. So uh, I think that is very, uh, uh, very good uh, opportunity for me to discover myself, mm -hmm. to realize I am a very a person full of passions. Mm -hmm. I'm a person uh, really like to uh, serve people with a purpose. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, that really helped me to to discover my 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 real talent okay. mm. since then i become a, mm, a a very positive person to to any, any kind of challenge and i want to do a good job and i see there is a good purpose of doing that and uh, so then the big boss of american express noticed you right well it didn't take too long for him to realize that because really? i uh, for example uh, simple reasons that uh, very often I'm asked by the tourists saying, well, Stanley, would you mind to come back on Sunday to go to the post office because I'm leaving tomorrow. OK, oh. so I would take the initiative to do that for them. You know, I, I would I would every weekend when I supposed to be my day off. Yeah, I, I went to the post office just like like normal days, you know, to pick up the mail. If I discover the mail, I would call the, the guys in the, in the hotel. Oh. And remind him his mail have arrived. Oh, okay. So anyway, uh, those are the things was not required by the company because right. it's my day right. off, you know. But I would do that, mm. okay. And I sometimes transfer mails if when I see someone who who have been coming for a few more times and without being able to see the mail and they disappointingly they have to leave. So I said, well, why don't you just give me your next address? I'll try to mail it to you. Oh, wow. And I did. At your uh, own expense? At my own expense. Oh. At that time, I don't even know a company can, can compensate you for that. Oh. And I only earn like a $50 a month. Yes. And half of them have to go to my mother, you know. Uh -huh. But I will reach out my pocket and buy a post, uh, a you know, stamp. post stamp uh -huh. and, and send it for them. So uh, accidentally, obviously, uh, without my notice, as, uh, some people will come back and send me, a, they would write back some postcards, tell uh -huh. me how grateful they are. Right. And there are people who write directly to the GM. Oh, okay. So you, you, you got a staff to have did some extraordinary work. Yes. So uh, the GM started to recognize there is someone, okay, yes. uh, are serving the customer with full of passions. Mm. So they start to offer me the very first job will require university degree. Mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, my English start to pick up. Oh. I finally see a reason and purpose of learning English. Wow. Of course, English is still getting rusty. You know, oh, I, I don't think so. You're fine. For a long time. Yeah. But yeah, since then, I, I certainly try hard yes. you know, to pick up my language. Wow. Yeah. How do you exactly learn the language? I mean, for our listeners, you know, um, Taiwanese people are afraid to sp open their mouth and speak up because they're, they're afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, if you can, Mr. Yan, tell them how <laughs> they should be bold enough to open their mouth and speak. I mean, what other advice do you have? Well, if you see any growing up kids, they never, you will never give them a book, ask them to memorize the, the spellings before you teach but them Taiwan how to speak. But Taiwan education does that. That's a the Taiwan education. Memory. Yes. But the reality is the 70% of the kids cannot learn through books. Mm -hmm. and so the, the, the most simple way to teach is by face-to-face by -face conversations, face-to-face -face demonstrations. Mm -hmm. So that's how I learn my English. Mm. You know, at school, I, okay. I really have, I hate English because you yeah. have to memorize all these vocabularies and all these words. But, but, but when you are in a real world, every day you have to talk to people mm -hmm. face to face, right or wrong. Yeah, my even English if you make mistakes, be, you didn't even care you make, if you make you mistakes. Don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I turn out to be, to, be, to be very positive in learning English. Yeah. But the thing is that we keep telling Taiwanese people to just don't be afraid to make mistakes and just, just open, open your mouth your and mouth. just say it. Sure. What else can you say? No, that's the only thing I, I say. <laughs> really? they, they just need to, you know, uh, you have to find any possible opportunities. Open your mouth. Yeah. You know? And of course, you have to learn about other people's culture. Mm -hmm. You know, you, uh, if you don't know about other people's culture, mm -hmm. you cannot carry a conversation. <laughs> you can only speak something out of your own knowledge. Right. And that doesn't go too long. Yeah. The only thing can can break through that barrier mm -hmm. is that you start to, to, to showing interest about where other people came from, what right. was the reason they are coming over here, mm -hmm. or what you can learn out of out of the conversations. Yeah. Mm. So, um, what was it like being the GM of American Express well, after you got that job? I was really uh, American Express have have not been doing well. For okay. the very fr first four and a half years, they opened in Taiwan, mm -hmm. and they seem to have a policy: if the company cannot work out in five years' time, they have a new president at that time just say, just close it down. 
Okay, that means the market That's is not serious? ready. Close it down. They, they was just simply saying, "Well, I'm willing to invest five years. If you can't make it, forget about it." Oh. Uh, we have a, we have a very tough uh, CEO at that time. Yes. But anyway, um, uh, I was I was asked to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I was actually gradually promoted to the to the manager in charge of the sales department. Okay. okay. So. Uh, I realized the company was too conservative. They're trying to copy whatever they're doing in America. America, American Express have its f high profile, but when you mm -hmm. come to a new country like Taiwan, it is very hard. Right. So finally, I have to recommend to the country, say, no, this is not right to okay. the company. Mm -hmm. I said, unless you have to turn around, make a new approach, you cannot make it. All right. So the general manager, uh, without having any choice, uh, took my advice. And in half year, almost nine, nine months time, I managed to turn around the company mm -hmm. uh, from a uh, uh, from a continual losing situation to a profit making company. Wow, that is great. That is so great. that certainly uh, give a lot of credit for for myself. Yes. So and the company was at that time was seriously considered to localize okay. uh, the Taiwan operations All because right. we usually have. Uh, expatriate okay. running the operation. Okay. So it was just in the right time. Yes. I saved the company from its losing money situation from closing down the shop. Right. So finally they said, wow, if, the, if you can turn around the situation, you must be the right person. Uh -huh. Uh, we give the opportunity. All so, right. So that's how I got okay. started. Well, let's take a little break here uh -huh. and then we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. You're you're watching people and I'm Shirley Lin and today my guest is Mr. Stanley Yen who is chairman of the Lendis Taipei Hotel and chairman of the Alliance and we'll find out more about what that is all about now um, Mr. Yen you sure. went from general manager of American Express to realizing the importance of tourism um, you know as a way of opening up Taiwan to the world now um, that got you thinking and being involved in a lot of things sure. and uh, the impression you've given to the Taiwanese people is that you have huge global visions for Taiwan and its tourism and I don't know what not so can you talk a little bit about that well actually to to make it short throughout my life from very day when I was a messenger until I become the chairman of the Taiwan Visitor Association I become you know chairman for many other organizations in the world uh, for only one purpose. I feel the tourism, for many people just thinking about it's just one of the business. But mm. to me, I think tourism is, is the best vehicle to making friends for the countries, for, mm -hmm. for your, where you're, whatever you're coming from. Okay. So I carry that with a lot of passions. So I want to make friends for Taiwan. Mm -hmm. I joined Leading Hotel of the World. I was uh, once the chairman for the Leading Hotel of the World, Pacific, uh, Asia Pacific. Right, right. I joined uh, uh, Young President's Organization. Okay. okay. I run the World Conference in Taiwan as a chairman. I run the Trans-Pacific Conference in Taiwan. I joined PALA, Pacific Asia Travel Association, uh, for only one purpose, to make uh -huh. him friend for Taiwan. Oh. But by doing that, you're attending all these international organizations, you, you make yourself become more globalized. Mm -hmm. okay? And you realize what other people is doing for their own countries. Yeah, and uh, that's right. so when I, when I learn all this, uh -huh. when you come back, you realize at the first you think you are trying to make friends with others. Actually, they give you a tremendous opportunity to learn uh, something so yourself. True. Yeah. yeah that's so right. a lot of my knowledge, mm -hmm. or people so-called my global vision, uh -huh. is based on because my participation in different organizations, my physical attending for m many important conventions, mm -hmm. and of course with a lot of passions. So mm -hmm. when you come back, you're trying to open your big mouths and trying to influence the, the decision makers, trying to tell the young people, you're trying to warn the, the societies what. Yeah. It, what they went, they doing wrong, or what they should uh -huh. uh, focus themselves. Yeah. And uh, how much of an influence do you think you've done um, on the government, on the people in Taiwan, with uh, all this? You've been doing a lot for Taiwan, yeah. traveling abroad, going to conferences, and bringing back so much information and knowledge, and a, a lot of valuable advice for the Taiwanese people and the government. I'm sure. 
How do you think we've been doing so far? Well, never, never, never enough. Never okay. enough. I have written about six books. Yes. Okay. There are books talking about the future of Taiwan. There are books communicate with Chinese uh, young students. There are books talking to people about you trying. You have to be an angel to yourself and to others. Okay. Mm -hmm. I most recent book I talk about education. Yes. Okay. I um. I discovered Taiwan is is very backward. Okay, we we have such a huge education resources. Yes. Uh, we have 165 universities okay. out of 22 million, million people. You know, practically every kid can go to university, and they still have some leftovers. You know, have uh -huh. extra space. So obviously, we we grow ourselves to a situation. Uh, we make young people believe went to university is a solution. But it is not a solution unless you truly learn something that you're able to do well. Right. So, yeah, I wrote a new book, and yes. uh, the book seems selling very well. Okay. But the more important is we have to change the policy makers. Mm -hmm. Okay. I um, I was invited by the previous government to the presidential office to give speech. You know, I did about three speech. Yeah. And the current government, yes, I did. I also invited to the presidential office to give speech. I went to the public. I'm one of the popular speakers in Taiwan. Yes, but it's never enough. You know, mm -hmm. it's you can never depend on one person uh, uh, change the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. I understand that you're doing a lot uh, over on the East Coast, especially helping the children of indigenous tribes. Can you talk a bit about that? How you got mm -hmm. started with that part? Yeah. Um, and I know you're putting a lot of your time in it. Apparently, just in July, you were busy over in that area, the yeah. East Coast, with a lot of like English camps and children's camp and everything. Oh, ours. Yes. Yeah, yes. You, you're turning young yourself. Well, I did about seven camps in, in one summer. You know, wow. I have over 100 some volunteers from America, from China, from oh, all over the okay. place, from the world, yeah. And from East West Coast as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's rather exciting. Uh, I believe for two very important reasons. One is the East Coast is a very unique place. Mm -hmm. That is a place without industry. Mm -hmm. The only industry they have is tourism. Yeah, that's and, right. And uh, they have the most spectacular sceneries uh, from Taroko Gorge all along the coast. They have a beautiful right. mountains and uh, beautiful oceans. I was born uh, the, in Hualien. Oh, is that myself. right? So you know yourself, yeah. <laughs> yes. They have seven indigenous tribes there, okay. and each one have very rich cultures. So I think uh, my frustration is uh, most of the young people over there, they are measured mm -hmm. their talent uh, exactly equally uh, with the kids in the East Coast, West Coast. Okay. But the reality is, most of the kids over there, indigenous uh, young people especially, they are very talented in music, art. They, uh, in Taiwan, most of the outstanding singers, seven out of ten, is coming from the East Coast. Yes, that's right. Uh, you know, and We're so in Taitung blessed. itself, yeah. within 10, 10 kilometers, there are Ten persons have received the Grammy Award in the Taiwan version, mm -hmm. you know, Grammy mm -hmm. Awards. Yeah. But unfortunately, these people in their own hometown, they have no platform to perform. Mm. They have no education system to, to, to support them. They all have to s use their own talent uh, with their own self-learning kind of situations. So I think this is not fair. We have not really given enough opportunity to de love, develop their talent. Mm -hmm. So I went there to, to build camps. I went there trying to, I'm trying to do a school actually, yes. uh, to uh, develop their talent. Is I'm, this what the Alliance is all about? Yes, the Alliance is allowing a lot of artists, musicians, all the different talent uh, from the West Coast, from the world. I bring them over to the East Coast. And, a, and, and give exchange, them opportunity. Right? exchange, yeah. yes. Oh. And uh, it's been doing so f very well so far, and I, I believe this will be the future. Uh, also, another reason is because uh, uh, on the west coast of Taiwan, it's like any part of the world, when you're too developed, uh, people are in a very, very uh, 
very nervous conditions. I mean, they 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 are working under pressures. They are they are they are, they are in the noisy street cities. You know, they they have no room to get out to get a fresh air. Mm -hmm. uh, East Coast is totally different. I think people uh, one day. You you realized I mean uh, how many cars do you want how many room do you, house do you need how many watch can you wear? Gradual people will realized they are the, the material uh, uh, chasing after material. The time is over, you know, okay. with the global warmings, with all the life have changed. People is looking for simple life now. Mm -hmm. People is to looking for. Voluntary simplicity is the word we used to say. Oh, okay. I think the East Coast is exactly the place can provide you this. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of bed and breakfast place. Mm -hmm. We have artists who run a little small bed and breakfast place. You can mm -hmm. go there, not like a tourist. You can go there for stay for a couple of weeks, uh, and live sharing their life with you. Mm -hmm. To learn how they live their life, how they can easily enjoy with the natures, mm -hmm. and which I think the indigenous people at the East Coast is our is really is our asset, can provide mm -hmm. that that environment, and of course another selfish reason is I do not like the East Coast to be ruined, mm. okay, because that uh, if we have just developer go there and big build buildings and make it like a. Like a like a like a Waikiki or like a like another beach resort, I think that will ruin the place. Mm -hmm. I think that we have much in depth can offer over there. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, that would be a waste. You know, um, if true. it's just a tourist place. Sure. Right. So um, I'm sure those Aboriginal children, uh, their parents are very grateful to you. Um, I think in the book you also mentioned the important role that parents should play in the children's future. Do you want to talk about that? Because I'm a parent myself. Okay. You know, so what do you have to say to parents? Because they do play a big role, as, well, as much as, you know, the government has to play you know, sure. an important role as well. Sure. I think education, especially in Asia, we're very behind. Mm -hmm. We still believe examination is the only way to judge people's, uh, stu young people's mm -hmm. talent. We do not understand Every young people have different talent and potential. That is so true. And you have to, as a parent or as a school teacher, they, their first job is not to uh, to uh, to examine the, the young people. It's trying to find the talent. Each individual is different. Yeah, and, everybody's and different. I think, I think Yetz, uh, from a long time, Yetz have made a comment. He said, education is not pulling water into bucket. Uh -huh. It is lighting a fire. Okay. But unfortunately, after so many years, we are still pulling water into buckets. Uh -huh. In Taiwan, we call Tian Ya Si Jiao Xue. Yes. We force feeding knowledge to their knowledge. Force feeding. To, mm -hmm. to their brand. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, when you force feeding them, force them to memorize some of the things, they can easily today pick up an iPad. Mm -hmm. An iPhone, they can get all the answers, they can Google and getting all the answers they want. And we force the kids to use their brand, okay, mistakenly, just force them to fit in a lot of knowledge. And uh, so as a teacher, I think today what we really need is your job is not to teach your pe young people. Mm -hmm. You are working with them to help them to discover problems, They're finding talent. solutions, uh -huh. okay? And even more important is, as a teacher, they always have to the, have the confidence to make the young people better than themselves, better mm -hmm. than teacher themselves, mm -hmm. rather than trying to only teach them and uh, give them no alternative to think other possibilities. Mm. Yeah. Wow. What is your future plan? I'm sure you've got a lot of ideas right here. You know, plans, dreams about what you can do for the children. Maybe not only the children of Taiwan, but the you know the whole community of Taiwan. What what is your your dream? I mean, you're okay. always so mission oriented. I. You know, as your time go older, you know your time is limited. What yes. you can do is also limited. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, in one way, on a national-wide basis or worldwide basis, I'm trying to write my book. 
Okay, okay, in the Chinese community, the book is selling not only in Taiwan, also in China, in Hong Kong, other places. So I'm trying to tell young uh, Asian parents they should have different approach to their kids' futures. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is I'm I'm for I concentrate myself at the East Coast. I believe instead of trying to do a little bit of everything everywhere, I should focus myself and trying to in one area trying to in uh, to to really. Hard, uh, try hard, learn hard, and finally you can you can demonstrate something that it, that it, that can work. Right. You you need some adjustments. You you need to make some some effort. But at the end, I hope that can be something can for other destination can follow. Oh, so okay. for the government can consider. Yeah. But it seems that you're starting to focus mostly on the art. Or the music area Art, first. Culture, their talent. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to, for example, I'm seriously thinking about building a vocational school with bilingual vocational school. Good, good. Because when you have a bilingual vocational school, you let the young people really connect the world. Oh, which in that Taiwan, is so true. Yeah, you never have a vocational school have yeah. bilingual. All right. So um, I understand that you're also bringing in like. You know uh, some of the famous uh, Taiwan's percussion groups to help, you know, connect with these kids, and then to be able to go abroad. Yes. Um, you know, spread their influence, um, show their talent. Yeah. And um, are you going to be taking up a, a a musical instrument yourself, or do oh, you already no, know? No, I uh, <laughs> it didn't. I used to play violin. I was a oh, conductor really? myself. Okay. But I, I very. It didn't take me a long time to realize I'm. I'm just an amateur. Oh. Yeah, so. What well, what role do you play when you go to these camps? Um, you gave a speech. You do classes. No. You play with them. I have all the best people. I find the best people do that. Oh. All my you, job is to say too. thank you to everybody. Oh, I see. <laughs> and and yeah, I have of course a strong administration team. Yes. I have yes. to back them up. Yeah, all right. Sure. Thank you so much, You're Mr. Yen. I've learned You're so welcome. much from you. Yeah. I really appreciate your big heart. And wow. um, I hope that you can, I'm sure you'll be still continue to contribute a lot more to, you know, to Taiwan. I believe everybody, if you really be able to uh, encourage them, everybody do have a big heart. <laughs> it just sometimes you have to uh, try to understand that it's going to be your priority for your life. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching, people. I'm Shirley Lin.